The University of Massachusetts Amherst released a wide-ranging political poll this week. Among the matters it asked people about, their opinions of Governor Charlie Baker and President Donald Trump, the direction of the state and the nation, the 2018 primary, and it even looked ahead to the 2020 presidential election. We'll get into all of that in a moment. But first, I asked Tatish Nateta and Jesse Rhodes, both from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, what surprised them about the polling results? Well, I think one thing that was really striking in the poll was the interesting role of age. Um, so the 2018 elections were very notable for the high level of participation among yo younger cohorts. And even in Massachusetts, a state that's a very progressive state, there was a really interesting differences uh, based on age in support for candidates and support for different issues on the ballot. So for example, if you look at uh, Senator Warren's support, um, there's much greater support among younger, uh, those in the 18 to 29, age group as opposed to the oldest uh, age group. Um, the reverse, of course, was true for um, Governor Baker as well, that younger groups supported him much less than older groups. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, and I was interested too, looking at the breakdown of who voted when, the 20% of folks who told, who responded to the poll saying that they voted early, given that young piece, I expected early voting numbers to be much higher. What did, what did you think when you saw those numbers? Yeah, I mean, early voting is a somewhat new addition to right, the first ways time we saw in it in which, a midterm. Yeah, the ways in which people vote. And also, you know, people aren't used to voting in midterms. Historically, midterm turnout is very low. So I think people are, you know, getting used to this new form of voting. Um, but the likelihood is that younger people are going to be more interested in that type of voting. Uh, those who are closer to cities are going to be more interested in that type of voting in terms of the length of time people usually take to vote. And this is part of a nationwide trend as well, that we're seeing a real change uh, occurring in how people vote and yep. why. And we're seeing more people voting remotely, more people um, voting before Election Day. And this change is being led by younger voters. And how about for you? Anything stood out, surprises? Yeah, so we asked a question regarding uh, the 2020 Democratic presidential primary. Um, we assume that Senator Warren is going to run for president, uh, given the fact of her popularity in the state. We also assumed that she would be the front runner in her own state. And what we found was that she is actually behind both Senator Sanders as well as former Vice President Joe Biden. Um, and the traditional uh, groups which have supported Senator Warren, people of color, uh, young voters, liberal voters, women voters, tend not to be showing up in support of a potential Warren candidacy. And when you look at her popularity here in the state, it's very high. So that could be an indication that people want her to stay representing the state of Massachusetts and not seek higher office. Is that how you read those numbers? I think that could definitely be a part of it. Another possible uh, interpretation is that uh, Massachusetts voters are thinking about who would be the best candidate to go head to head with Donald Trump in a general election. And they may view um, Senator Warren um, as someone who's excellent to represent the state, but are thinking about figures who have a more national reputation um, as someone who might be the best fit to uh, uh, compete with uh, President Trump in, in 2020. And staying with 2020, your poll also asked the Republicans uh, who you polled in this whether they would support President Trump if he ran for re-election. So 40 percent of people who uh, supported said they would support him again. Interestingly, it looks like, according to your poll, there's a race between President Trump, were he to run again, and Governor Baker, who hasn't said he's getting into the race. What did you think of that? Yeah, I mean, I think in some ways that's not surprising. Governor Baker is one of the most popular figures in the state and arguably one of the most popular political figures in the entire country. Um, and so it makes sense that in a state in which there's been high levels of economic growth, there's been very little controversy or any scandals that a person like Governor Baker would be extremely competitive with President Trump given all of the issues that President Trump has had in his first few years in office. And I think uh, it's very important to keep in mind that one of the keys to Governor Baker's success, as the UMass poll shows, is that he's viewed by Massachusetts voters as very different from President Trump and very different from the National Republican Party. And so in a progressive state, uh, Governor Baker has found a formula that's very appealing um, despite the fact that he is a Republican. And what do you think the message that the Baker camp might take from, from the poll could be? I mean, I think the message that the poll communicates is that 
Governor Baker has maintained his overwhelming popularity. But what's interesting is that his popularity is wide ranging. So he is popular amongst the young and the old. He's popular amongst liberals and conservatives. He's popular amongst Trump voters and Clinton voters. I make the case he's done the impossible. His <laughs> approval rating, he has a majority of support of Clinton voters and a majority of support from Trump voters. And that's something rare in our politics today. Absolutely. So as I said, the poll is wide, wide ranging. We focused a lot on 2020 so far. You also polled in the UMass poll about the direction that the country is heading. And those numbers were fascinating to me because it's a direct flip flop, right? If people feel like the nation isn't doing well, they feel as though the state of Massachusetts is doing quite well. Uh, it was 68% in the right direction here if you live in the state versus 32%. Uh, and like I said, that flip flopped. So is that an indication that people want to be more optimistic, I know you're political science, not psychology professors, but I'll put you on the spot here, um, that people are you know, looking at a positive impact, positive effect for themselves closer to home. If you go broader, not so much. I think it actually reflects in significant part how people's perceptions of national politics and the national economy are related to their partisan predispositions, that we live in very polarized times. And as a result, how people view what's going on in the world is shaped by who is they view as being in control. So in national politics, President Trump dominates the conversation currently. Until 2018, we had Republican Congress. And so Massachusetts voters, who you know I think are overwhelmingly Democratic and liberal, um, when they look at the national situation, they think not good. Um, but when they look closer to home and they see you know, not only a dynamic economy and many things to be proud of in the state, but a Republican governor who is a moderate in a Democratic legislature, it makes them feel pretty good about what's going on in the state. Anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, if you just look at the characteristics of the state of Massachusetts, we are doing well. So we have the number one ranked public school system. Our health care is world class. Um, there's low unemployment. So of all the things that people care about, the sort of bread and butter uh, issues in politics, Massachusetts and the economy, Massachusetts is doing fantastic. So I think it's just a reflection of reality. You turn on the news and you see all of the bad news that's coming out of the nation. But if you read your local newspaper, you read uh, the Boston Globe or the Boston Herald, it's really positive news about the state. Hmm. Uh, you also did some uh, word clouds, which I think are just really fun. So we're going to take a look at those. You asked the most important problem facing Massachusetts, and we'll show this to the folks at home with the graphic as well. Infrastructure and housing came out as words that people used again and again. Did you give people selections or was just this free association for people? This was something that people had the opportunity to um, just describe what they thought were the most important issues. And what we, one thing that we took away from this is that Massachusetts voters are very much focused on very bedrock, basic, uh, less ideological issues that deal with people's experiences in day-to-day -day life. And, and what's kind of interesting is what didn't rise to the top, um, issues that have become very salient in national politics like immigration and abortion and other very ideologically charged and racially charged issues. And it seems to suggest that Massachusetts voters are really thinking about these kind of bedrock uh, issues and also issues where there seems to be opportunities for compromise and, and uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a reflection of the success of Massachusetts over the last few years. Housing is a reflection of the fact that people want to move here, that, you know, on the west side of the state, on the east side of the state, things are going well. People see this as a place they want to raise a family, they want to build a career, and so housing becomes a problem. Infrastructure also becomes a problem as you, ha if you increase the population of particular regions of the state. And so again, as Jesse said, I think this is a reflection of the sort of bread and butter parts of uh, politics, that people want solutions to these particular problems. And that's across the state.